There's another drug. I don't want to leave without talking about that one. Um, that's, I'm going to try this one. <laughs> Rizdaplam? Yes, that's perfect. Really? That's it, I'm done. Tell me about Rizdaplam. <laughs> so Rizdaplam works with a similar concept to how Nusinersen has already established efficacy. Okay. So it's working on that SMN2 gene, but um, the difference is this is an oral modulator that can be delivered really? orally um, to the patient um, to increase SMN expression through um, altering SMN2 gene expression. So let me see. Ristoplam is a liquid suspension that can be delivered orally or via G-tube to people living with SMA. So that's one mm. of the differentiating points. Um, so there's been a couple of pivotal trials um, that have been collecting data, mostly in Europe, because Nusinersen's availability in the United States made it difficult to study here at okay. the time that they were trying to look at. But Was that um, because Nusinersen was, was efficacious? So it'd be unethical necessarily to take them off of it one was, drug? It was hard because it was available in the clinic and so to make Got the it. decision to commit to a research trial when you had a clinically available option in this country okay. was some, sometimes challenging to navigate but um, there's an infantile onset trial and also in type 2 patients as well. These are called firefish and sunfish trials and um, early efficacy data as well as safety tolerability data has been presented at major meetings again looking encouraging in terms of both being well tolerated and having F F F efficacy for SMA. Tell me about the data. I mean, you said there was encouraging data. What does it look like? Well, it's, it's, I think in the, the challenge is that the trials are different in terms of the populations that were studied and the outcome measures. So going across different agents is a bit of a leap in terms of trying to directly compare them. Um, but, uh, and I think it's also too early in the uh, uh, collection of the data to be certain about it, but there's trends in the right direction with this particular approach. So I think what we're all excited about in the community right now is that because we already have one approved therapy and potentially two more at least on the horizon for SMA, that this has now evolved into one of being recommended in newborn screening in the United States. And so we have several states that are already screening newborns for this double deletion. Important to understand that that's about 96% of patients of SMA, but those other 5% who have mutations aren't going to be identified by newborn screening. But when but, you say newborn screening, is this all newborns? Yes, everybody. Everybody. Born is going to be identified if they have that most common double deletion as being genetically affected with SMA at birth and being referred to a neurologist who then has to decide do they go on intervention at that point. How and expensive is, is the screening? Um, so that actually is relatively feasible because there's already a genetic screen in place in most states for immune deficiency. Oh, so, you um, just add this. so you just add that onto the platform. Okay. Um, and then, um, you know, with this relatively one in 10,000 incidents, it's going to be a handful of patients per state that are identified, um, but they have the potential to then be intervened on before they develop symptoms of their genetic disease. Do you ever feel put upon? that all this wonderful medical progress is being dumped in your lap to pay for it? Oh, I don't feel that way at all. I, I'm, I'm excited, glad. I'm excited for, for therapies that hopefully work, right? That impact survival, that impact quality of life. Uh, isn't, that the, isn't that what science is supposed to be doing? And isn't that why when I speak to you both on and off the air, yeah. I tell you, this is great. I mean, really, what, what, let, me, let me speak for everybody and see if everybody agrees. What we're looking for is a team. Nobody wants to bankrupt the nation, but nobody wants to see people die either. It's tricky, isn't it? So, do you feel sympathy for her? Absolutely. You do? I, I, <laughs> I think I said it earlier. I don't envy her job at all. Um, you know, I, I understand the position that payers are in. Um, and, you know, speaking for the rare disease community, um, you know, we want treatments. We want, um, we want therapies, successful therapies for our patients. But you want treatments that work. We want treatments that work and that are safe. Yes, absolutely. Um, and, you know, once those arrive, once they come, you know, we don't want our families to be bankrupt, right? So how do we ensure that, that they're covered? And um, that's, that's kind of out of our hands and it, it's in the payer's hands, but um, it is a challenge and, and I understand your position. Yeah. Let, me, let me put it to you this way. It's a challenge I'm glad you've got. <laughs> it's good news. Well, with high hope also comes high cost, but also high expectations. Right? Well, you know, and the expectation is that these do deliver on cures. This has been a tremendous discussion. And before we go, I want to let each of you sort of sum up something you think it's really important to take away. So why don't we start at this end of the um, table? 
Well, I, I am actually glad that we're here having this discussion because, um, you know, we are, are talking about a couple of disease states that actually have therapies, um, successful ones, and more on the horizon, um, which is more that can be, then can be said for other disease states. Um, I think that there is a lot of hope for families um, with SMA, and um, I'm excited um, about the gene therapies on the horizon as well. I think gene therapy is, gives so much promise to so many families, um, not just with SMA, but you know some of the hemophilia, sickle cell. I think there's so many uh, trials out there and there's so much hope. Um, I, I think this is a great time for rare diseases. Um, you know, not only is there more attention being brought on rare diseases, but there are therapies, um, potentially curative therapies out there. Um, and so this is a, a great time for us. And I just hope that this is just the beginning of more to come. Any pithy last comment? I think um, we have to be careful using the word cure when we're talking about these sorts of disorders. My understanding of the data so far from all of the approaches that we have is nobody is completely asymptomatic. And so I can't underemphasize how much of a celebration it is to now be in clinic with people living with SMA. We always tried to optimize function and had a very positive dynamic in our clinic as much as possible in neuromuscular disorders. But now we're seeing videos of all the new things that the kids are doing and they're so proud to show us new things that they're able to do, um, but being on these therapies. Um, but they're still living with symptoms and so they still need to have the multidisciplinary care in place and to keep that connection. And I hope that we continue to try to come up with the best possible cocktail of different approaches for patients to optimize their function in a way that is practical for us as a society to sustain this, which is, I think, where we can shift gears to the other end. Yeah. You've got the last word. I think this has been a great discussion in terms of value. And hopefully the conversation will continue to evolve so that in the end, these promising therapies really can demonstrate um, their value in terms of outcomes and, and improved quality of life. I don't often sum up my feelings at this moment. I will hear, I'm excited. And I am proud to be in a profession which has done this for people and is continuing to do this for yeah. people. And that includes insurance. Everybody's got a piece of this and it's all going the right way. It's, it's, it's a pleasure and an honor to be at the table with all you guys. You know. Wonderful you've all been here. On behalf of our panel, I want to thank you for joining us. We hope that you found this peer exchange discussion to be useful and informative. I'm Dr. Peter Salgo, and I'll see you next time.